This episode of Ride News Now is brought to you by the new Harman Spark. Upgrade your current ride with in-car Wi-Fi, virtual diagnostics, and so much more. To activate yours exclusively with AT&T, visit the link in the description. Traffic sucks, but some fancy future computing tech could help alleviate our stop and go sadness. Very smart people working at both Ford and Microsoft are teaming up to find ways to reduce traffic congestion, and they're doing so with quantum computing. This is actual computing done at the level of atoms and subatomic particles. Basically, Ant-Man is helping us make traffic move more efficiently. At least that's my understanding of it all. We don't actually have high level quantum hardware just yet, but scientists can simulate facets of quantum principles on standard computers. And the resulting algorithms that they create show possible ways to reduce traffic. In just 20 seconds, one program showed a route through Seattle, which decreased congestion by 73%. That could save 55,000 hours of time for those stuck in Starbucks city. Way to go, Ant-Man. You were always my favorite superhero. I mean, after Spider-Man and Wonder Woman and Squirrel Girl. And in order to create smarter mobility solutions, Washington, D.C. went to the lab. The lab at D.C. is a think tank aimed at improving how residents get around our nation's capital. Created by the mayor's office, the lab recently looked at how low-income residents used city buses versus D.C.'s pricier rail service. The numbers showed a stark disparity in public transportation habits based on the price difference between the two. In a pilot program, Washington, D.C. will offer free passes or highly discounted trips on its rail services to select riders. In return, they can use the data to gauge the impact on transportation habits. After all, public transport is only as good as how many people can afford to use it. And now, let's shift to a more serious news item. It's been 64 years since Rosa Parks famously chose not to give up her bus seat to a white man in Montgomery, Alabama. And while segregation laws may seem way outdated nowadays, recent studies revealed no shortage of modern day inequalities. For instance, a study by the Institute of Transportation Studies found that African-American ride sharers were 73% more likely to have a driver cancel on them compared to white riders. And one in four African-Americans have had their taxi rides canceled before they start. The list of studies with similar findings is long, revealing that we've depressingly still got a ways to go before we're all treated truly equally. Bottom line, Rosa Parks took a stand way back in the day, but we've all got to work to ensure everyone gets a fair shake as we head into this new decade. Okay, you e-scooter loving boys and girls, brace yourselves. This one's gonna hurt. A new study on e-scooter injuries reveals that, uh, well, if you wind up in the hospital getting an x-ray or CT scan after a spill, there's a more than 50% chance your injury is radiologically apparent. That means serious enough that it will show up on the scan. We're not talking bumps and bruises here. We are talking tears and breaks. According to the Radiological Society of North America, which kind of sounds like a superhero convention, but okay. If you go down on a scooter, the most common boo-boos you're likely to encounter involve your upper extremities, like fractures to your forearm near your wrist. Ooh. The study also found numerous soft tissue injuries to the head, face, wrist, and ankle. Ouch. Lessons learned? Well, the study suggests that limiting scooter speed can significantly reduce injuries, as well as using safety gear like helmets and wrist guards, which is maybe not as badass as speeding along sans gear, but sure beats a trip to the ER. But hey, nobody said safety had to be cool. Okay, bear with me. Here's a metaphor that might help prove a point. Micromobility vehicles, that is scooters, bicycles, and segways, are like the orphans of the transportation world. Here's why. These little vehicles, or LVs for short, are banned on sidewalks and aren't exactly encouraged to share the road with cars, which puts them in an awkward in-between space. That kind of intravehicular discord, okay, I totally made that up, 
is really not cool. I mean, we live in an age when future technology is now, but cities can't get it together to find a way for all these nifty forms of transportation to peacefully coexist. So what can we do to bridge the divide? Well, according to a University of Boulder study, if streets were safer for LVs, more people would choose them over less environmentally friendly cars. So while there's no magic bullet for helping LVs better blend into cities, starting the conversation is a good place to begin. You're a modern person. You like your coffee brewed cold. Your nutrition comes in soylent form. And your preferred mode of transportation is electric. But if you live somewhere cold, you better keep an eye on the temperature and your tires. Most electric or hybrid vehicles are fitted with a type of tire that loves to roll on and on. It's called a low rolling resistance tire. It's designed to maximize miles per charge, but it's not designed to give you the best grip when things get hairy. By contrast, a proper winter tire, often called a snow tire, is engineered to work best in temperatures below 50 degrees. It has a rubber compound that stays nice and soft when, oh baby, it's cold outside. Simply put, a softer tire gives better grip. And it's not just the rubber. The tread pattern is different too. Winter tires have specific tread patterns designed to improve grip. That means less getting stuck, better stopping, and way better response if you have to quickly turn to avoid, say, a deer that jumped out from behind a snow-covered shrubbery. In short, winter tires help keep your electric car plowing ahead in the slush, the sleet, the snow, and any other kind of miserable cold weather stuff that happens where you might live. <laughs> Not where I live. We shoot this show in SoCal. If it's below 50 degrees, forget snow tires. It might as well be the day after tomorrow part two because I am not leaving my house. CES is a tech show, but in the past few years, it's also become a showcase for automakers to show off their latest wares. Now there's an entire hall that's dedicated to cars. Plenty of automakers are making sure that CES is highlighted, circled, and called out on their calendar so they're ready to show off the goods. And Fiat Chrysler decided to roll deep for 2020. You know that iconic Jeep Wrangler? FCA brought one fitted with plug-in hybrid tech. You likely won't find a plug out on the Rubicon Trail, but that will certainly be a fuel saver when you're not out overlanding for the gram. Thinking more into the future, FCA's Airflow Vision concept shows what a forward-thinking automotive environment could look like as imagined by the Chrysler crew. According to Fiat Chrysler, the Airflow Vision is a sculptural design concept that envisions the next generation of premium transportation and UX, that's user experience, by considering how the driver and passengers could interact with advanced technologies. That just means it's loaded with tech, super fancy, and prioritizes the riders in a way that makes DVD players for kids feel more like an in 8-track player. And we can't forget the Italian side of the family. Fiat showed off a new concept called the Centoventi, which is sadly not a mobile coffee machine. Instead, it's a futuristic celebration of Fiat's 120-year history. So they could have thrown in some espresso, no? Is there a coffee hall at CES? I mean, let's find that next year, okay guys? Cool. Do you shun the EV? For a large group of Americans, the mere thought of driving a vehicle powered by electricity is about as palatable as joining a cult. Well, according to a recent study by research group Deloitte, electric vehicle sales are going to explode in the next four years, but not the ones you might expect. Deloitte says there's a much higher chance that if you buy an EV in the next five years, it'll be an e-bike. Not exactly what you were thinking, is it? But e-bike sales are apparently set to outpace every other electric vehicle, with as many as 130 million sold between now and 2023. Uh, hey, uh, Charles, I need you to buy me some stock in an electric bike company. Yeah, I don't, I don't know which one, it's fine, just figure it out. Okay, gotta go, bye. <laughs> And for all you folks who think it's crazy to ride a bike to work, maybe you're the one who's in the cult? The car cult. Speaking of car cults, nobody does it like Tesla, or at least nobody was doing it like Tesla until now. 
Tesla changed the car buying game by selling to customers directly. This gave them the power to popularize advanced reservations for vehicle purchases. They made your car buying experience more like buying an iPhone and less of a mind war with car selling sociopaths. Configure the car you want online and they'll build it for you. How great is that? Now, other car companies like Fisker, Lucid, and even Ford and VW are jumping on board this buzzworthy car sales strategy. A lot of people are drinking the Kool-Aid. Let's just hope they don't stain those brand new eco leather seats. When you think high tech innovation, you totally think New York City buses. No? Anybody? Well, the city that never sleeps or sweeps its subways has exactly 1.1 billion reasons to prove us wrong. That's the amount of money NYC will spend to introduce 500 electric powered buses into its fleet. This skyscraper tall stack of cash will also be used to build charging stations and innovative mobile charging units for those buses. So how much do electric buses cost? How about $1.4 million each? And you thought New York rent was bad. The hope is that this huge upfront cost will pay off in the long run because each electric bus will save the city the cost of about 8,000 gallons of petroleum-based fuel every year. It's all part of an ambitious plan for New York to have net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Coincidentally, that three decade time frame happens to be the half life of the average wad of gum stuck to a bus seat. New year, new you, new Tesla, or at least a brand new place to build them. For the first time, Tesla vehicles are being built outside of the US. The electric car company's factory in Shanghai, China, delivered its first vehicles just before 2019 drew to a close. These first 15 Model 3 sedans went to Tesla employees here in the States. But the hope moving forward is that a whole lot more than 15 cars a year will be pouring into the domestic Chinese market. When fully up and running, their goal is to produce 500,000 cars annually out of their Chinese Gigafactory. These locally made Tesla cars are cheaper to buy because they're immune from import taxes. Electric vehicle subsidies also help lower the price by about 3,500 bucks. It's not as exciting as shattered Cybertruck windows, but Tesla's factory in China will help Tesla crack the elusive untapped Chinese market in the years to come. <laughs> Broken windows. BMW and Daimler, the parent company of Mercedes-Benz, are tired of sharing. More to the point, they've grown tired of the rideshare business here in North America. Both Car2Go and the short-lived ShareNow rideshare programs are coming to an end in 2020. After nearly a decade in business, Car2Go and its fleet of tiny smart cars officially drives off into the sunset on February 29th. But hey, at least you get one extra day thanks to leap year. Also on the outs is Share Now, a rideshare that used a combination of BMW and Mercedes vehicles. While they're normally fierce rivals, the two German companies have been willing to cooperate when it comes to rideshare ventures, both here and in Europe. So what happened? Well, generally, there weren't enough people sharing the cars. In other cases, users got a little confused about how the sharing was supposed to work. Like when some would vandalize or just outright steal the cars. Come on, people, this is why we can't have nice things. When it comes to charging out in the wild, Tesla owners have it so easy. Since the launch of its charging network in 2012, Tesla has amassed an empire of nearly 40,000 chargers across North America, most of which are free to use. And now, Tesla drivers get even more charging options through a new partnership. EVGO announced it'll start rolling out those funky little Tesla chargers at its stations as well. And oh boy, this sounds like a parking lot brawl waiting to happen. Think of it like adding a pump with both diesel and gas. These charging stations will have multiple hookups and charging methods so nobody misses out. Let's just hope those Teslas don't start hogging all the chargers from all the other EV drivers or we're gonna fight. I am hopped up on Twizzlers and ready to get rowdy. Don't test me, Tesla. Remember the Volkswagen ID Buzz? It's that cool electric concept van designed to pluck at the heartstrings of those who love the old school VW buses. 
Well, it's moving from conceptually cool to actual tool. Volkswagen and the nation of Qatar have worked out a deal to bring a fleet of ID Buzz shuttles to the city of Doha. And these don't just look cool in an old meets new sort of way. Volkswagen is setting up these vans to be both fully electric and self-driving. By the end of 2022, there will be 35 ID Buzz people movers shuttling folks all around Qatar's capital city. Testing begins next year, so Volkswagen better get their buzz in gear on this one. I am sure you have heard the term Hyperloop. It's a form of super high speed rail that basically shoots passenger cars like bullets through a sealed tunnel at 700 miles per hour. It doesn't actually exist, it's just an idea for now. But Hyperloop is on the horizon, and citizens of one of the most progressive states in the nation have expressed interest. I am talking about, you guessed it, Texas. The international infrastructure firm, AECOM, put together a study that asked folks in the Lone Star State what they would choose as the best way to travel the 420 plus miles from Laredo to Fort Worth. Their clear preference was to travel by Hyperloop. Makes sense, the old west was ripe with trains, so it's only fitting that the new west has something to match. We live in a digital age, so why not have digital trains? That's not a thing, and also that's not what Hyperloop is. Exactly, but Hyperloop is sorta of the closest thing we've got. Besides, when you realize Laredo to Fort Worth is a six and a half hour drive, you might be more willing to jump inside of a vacuum rocket, especially when it gets you there in 48 minutes. Yeah, believe it, Hyperloop would be faster than taking a plane. Sign me up. This episode of Ride News Now is brought to you by the new Harman Spark. Upgrade your current ride with in-car Wi-Fi, virtual diagnostics, and so much more. To activate yours exclusively with AT&T, visit the link in the description. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Also head to ride.tech for stories, reviews, and more news.